Hello and welcome to Tech Deals video card comparison NVIDIA's GeForce GTX 1050 Ti versus AMD's RX 460. Which video card should you buy and put in your computer? That's what we're going to take a look at today. Now, first of all, both of these cards are between $130 and $150 in price. There's various models. I happen to have the EVGA superclocked card from on the NVIDIA side, and I have the Sapphire Nitro card on the AMD side. Both are factory overclocked. Both have four gigs of VRAM. They're both very good cards. But this video is not about these specific cards. It's about the chips and the whole line of cards. Linked in the description below will be links to Newegg and Amazon, for both of these cards, pre-searched and pre-sorted price lowest to highest. Pick the brand you prefer, the one that has the size, color, configuration that you like. At this level of graphics card, there is virtually no performance difference between any of the different cards. Zotac, Gigabyte, MSI, PNY, EVGA, they're all within 1 or 2 percent of each other in performance. They'll all overclock the same. It doesn't make a lot of difference. They're all 75 watt cards. Pick the one you like or cost the least at the time you go and search. Same with the RX 460s. They're all overclockable. They're all about the same performance within a couple of percentage points of each other. From the slowest to the fastest card out of the box, you're looking at maybe one or two frames per second difference. Buy the card that costs the least or comes from the company that you prefer. Finally, please note, both of these cards come in versions with and without a 6-pin PCI Express power connector. Make sure that the card you buy does not need a 6-pin PCI Express power connector if your computer doesn't have one. If it does, then that's fine, then it doesn't matter. But some of these cards have one, some don't. Make sure you check that before you choose to buy any of the, of the individual cards. Now, which one of these should you buy? How's the performance? What are the benefits, pros, and cons of each of these cards? First, let me talk about price. In general, the NVIDIA card is between $10 to $20 more expensive than the AMD card is. On average, you can find these for about $150. There's two models available for $140, but most are in the $145 to $150 range. Prices vary. They're only good on the day I film this video, so of course, check them out and see what they're updated to now. The RX 460 has recently had a price drop. You can find these for as little as $127 on the day I filmed this video. There's one gigabyte model available on Newegg for $127. Most of these cards are in the $130 to $140 range. This specific card is $135 on the day I filmed this video. Again, prices change regularly, so compare them below. But at the end of the day, a $10 or $20 price difference probably shouldn't sway you one way or the other because there's other reasons to consider these cards. Now these both have four gigabytes of RAM. Let me talk about their two gigabyte versions for a minute which will be compared in detail in a separate video. The 1050 Ti, all 1050 Ti's have four gigabytes of VRAM. There is a 1050 non-Ti card with two gigabytes of VRAM. It generally costs about $30 less than the TI with four gigs. Separate video for that. Likewise, the RX 460 comes in a two gigabyte and a four gigabyte version. The actual chips are the same speed between the two cards, but one of course has twice as much VRAM. And again, you can get the two gigabyte version for about $30 less than the four gigabyte version. So the price disparity there is about $30 in both sets of cards. But today we're only looking at 4 gig cards, and I'll look at the 2 gig cards in a separate video. Assuming you are in the United States or wherever you live, the prices are as I just said. If they're within $10 or $20 of each other, I would buy the 1050 Ti all day long, not the RX 460. Why? It's not a bad card. The RX 460 is a great card. I like the 460. In fact, I own two of them. I've got a gigabyte, which I will be doing an upcoming review of. That's the two gigabyte version. This is the four gig version. It's a good card. Here's the problem. At $135 for this Sapphire card versus $150 for this EVGA card, there's a $15 price difference. The 1050 Ti 
is 25% faster. That's not a small difference. 25% is enough to be noticed. At just, for example, 50 frames per second, 25% takes you over 60 frames a second. That is a nice performance boost. Now, the actual performance difference will vary from game to game. Different games will have different levels of performance variance. That is an average among several games that I have looked at. However, I can find no game in which the RX 460 is faster than a 1080, excuse me, a 1050 Ti. So, in everything I've looked at so far, which admittedly is only a handful of games so far, the 1050 Ti is faster in all respects to the RX 460 and for $15 difference, which is basically a 10% price difference for a 20% performance difference, this is the deal among the 4 gig cards at this level. Now, that doesn't mean that none of you should buy an RX 460. Perhaps where you live or at the time you watch this video, the prices are different. If this RX 460 were $120 to $150, then that cancels out the performance difference because now the price difference makes up for it. Then the RX 460 would be a perfectly good choice. Let me talk about game performance. How much does that 25%, 20-25% difference really matter? If you're playing eSports titles, we'll call them one, eSports titles. If you're playing Rocket League, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Dota 2, League of Legends, Overwatch, it doesn't matter. Both of these cards will play those games perfectly. And I will show that to you on my channel in upcoming game performance videos. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please click the button below this video to subscribe because I will have some upcoming side-by-side -side comparisons in those games showing you the performance between these two 4 gig cards so that you can see the actual real-world gameplay difference between these two cards. And let me give you the short version. It isn't going to matter. Unless you're the kind of person who needs 200 frames per second, it's not going to matter. They'll both do 1080p, 60 plus frames per second in all those games at high detail with no issues whatsoever. What about this column of games? I call them the big budget splashy titles, the AAA titles. Battlefield 1, Doom, Hitman, Rise of the Tomb Raider, The Division. In those games, now, first of all, in those games, I would highly suggest you step up a level in card if you can afford it. AMD's RX 470 or NVIDIA's GTX 1060 are much better cards for the money if you can step up your budget to the $180 to $200 price range. If you've got $180 to $200, you will get more performance for your dollar at that level than you will down at this level. But if for whatever reason, either A, those cards are too expensive, or B, you need a smaller low power card to put into a basic or small mini computer, that's fine. In games like Battlefield and Rise of the Tomb Raider and Doom and Hitman, the extra 25% performance will make all the difference in the world to give you 1080p playable pr performance at a notch or two higher detail level. Now, please note, you cannot play Rise of the Tomb Raider at ultra detail on a 1050 Ti at 1080p it, at 60 frames a second. It won't do it. Now it'll do it at 35, 40 frames a second, but it's not a very playable experience. But at medium detail, it'll do it nicely. But you may have to turn the 460 down to low detail. So, if you only care about esports titles such as Overwatch or League of Legends, then it doesn't make any difference. But please note, and I'm going to reference the other video here for a minute, which I haven't filmed yet, but I'll film right after I do this one. If you only care about playing League of Legends or Overwatch or Call of Duty uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, you don't need a 4 gig card. A 2 gigabyte card will play those just fine. In which case, the 1050 non-TI card or the 2 gigabyte RX 460 will work just fine. I'll talk more about that in the other video, but please note, League of Legends and Counter-Strike Global Offensive do not require 4 gigs of VRAM. Where these cards make sense is if you also want to additionally play Doom, Hitman, that kind of stuff. 4 gigs does make a difference in those games. And I wouldn't buy a 2 gig card, a 2 gigabyte card in 2016 at this point if you want to play those type of games. 
the extra 25% performance on the 1050 Ti will make a difference, and you'll see that in the upcoming game performance videos. However, as I said, if this is less expensive at the time you shop, or maybe you don't live in the United States, then it's a perfectly viable option. It's a great card. It's a low power card. Both of these will work great in most computers. How do these cards compare to the previous generation of cards? What's it worth upgrading to from the old cards to the new cards? Well, let me talk about both of them. On the NVIDIA side, if you have a GeForce GTX 960, this is not an upgrade. In fact, within 5%, this is the exact same performance as a 960 from the previous generation. The reason it exists is it contains the new 10 series features and 75 watts instead of 120 and a lower price for the 4 gig card. That's its purpose. But in terms of performance, it's roughly equal to the previous generation 960. So if you've seen any benchmarks or if you've seen a 960 being played with, that's exactly what you can expect in terms of performance. How about the old card that was the old 750 Ti? If you by chance have a 750 Ti, this card is 70% faster than the 750 Ti. It is absolutely worthwhile to upgrade from a 750 Ti to a 1050 Ti if you need more performance. If you are playing games and you're going, man, I just have to turn the detail to low and it's still a little bit sluggish and I'd like more performance, 70% faster. Huge performance increase over the old 750 Ti. What about the AMD card? The RX 460 is roughly equal in performance to the R7 370 or the R9 280. The 280 is a little bit faster, but that's the type of previous card generation performance you're looking at here. So the R7 370, or going back to the 2 series, the 280 is roughly equal to what this is. The 280 was about 10% faster. So if you have a 280 or a 370, this is not really an upgrade. You've got to go to the 470 to get a big boost in performance over this. An RX 470 is about 70% faster than this. It's noticeably faster, but it costs more. So if you want more performance, now likewise on the NVIDIA side, the GTX 1060 is a noticeable performance increase over this, but it costs more and requires more power and a PCI Express power connector, so it's something certainly to keep in mind. So in terms of other cards, that's where these cards stand to the previous generation of cards. Again, if you've not subscribed to my channel, be sure to click the button below the video to subscribe because you'll be upcoming comparison videos comparing these two cards in both esports titles and upcoming games. I hope this was interesting and informative for you and answered some questions that you might have about these cards. Please note, I did not sit here and list out all the technical specs. I didn't talk about how many CUDA cores or streaming processors or, or what gigahertz they run at because I don't think those are, that's really important. Who cares what the core count is on the card? All I care is how well does it play games. At the end of the day, it's how well it actually works in your computer. How well do they play games? That's why on my channel I don't tend to list a lot of technical specs unless it's relevant, such as how much VRAM it has. And instead I want to know, will these cards play this list of games or this list of games really well? So I hope that's helpful and informative. Like the video if you like it. Don't if you don't. Remember to subscribe to my channel. I know I mentioned that. Questions and comments down below the video. And as always, if you like my channel, if you want to see more content, check out the video description below. Links to both of these cards and links to the full list of each of these cards at Newegg and Amazon will be in the video description below. Please check those out. As I said before, it doesn't really make any difference which brand you buy. It's a personal preference. Make sure you double check to see whether or not the card you want to buy has a six pin PCI Express power connector or not. Please note, the EVGA SuperClock card, no six pin PCI Express power connector. This particular Sapphire card does have a six pin power connector. However, many RX 460 four gig cards do not. So if you want no connector, then this is not the specific card you should look at, but look at the link to Newegg and Amazon down below. Take a look at the cards, be sure to look at the pictures and look at the specifications and you can see whether or not it needs a six pin connector or not. Thank you very much for watching my video. I will see you next time.